Good morning, everyone. Here are your morning headlines. The Senate this morning is scheduled to pass a bill to end the partial shutdown of the FAA. It will put 75,000 people back to work. The bipartisan deal will extend the FAA's authority to operate. When Congress returns from vacation, lawmakers will try to resolve a dispute over subsidies for rural airports. Rebel forces in Libya say that Muammar Gaddafi's youngest son was killed in a NATO airstrike this morning. The strike centered on the town of Zlitan, about 90 miles southeast of Tripoli. Kamis Gaddafi has been the leader of a military unit that's been fighting rebels. 32 others were also killed. NATO is investigating. Former Beatle Paul McCartney says he may have been a victim of phone hacking. McCartney said yesterday he plans to contact police about claims from his ex-wife Heather Mills that her voicemail messages were intercepted by tabloids. McCartney called it, quote, a horrendous invasion of privacy. And Tiger Woods is back on the prowl. After missing three months with leg injuries, Woods sank a 30-foot birdie putt at the Bridgestone Invitational yesterday. He finished six shots back and said it felt great to play again. And those were your morning headlines. I'm James Oldham, CBS News. While it's known for leading to people being arrested, why this particular breathalyzer could be flawed. Defense attorney John Saya is reviewing evidence. A stack of documents he says will prove the Intoxilizer 8000 is flawed. Evidence that's been denied permission to be presented in court until now. On Wednesday, Athens County Municipal Court Judge William Grimm issued this decision. A decision that makes it the responsibility of the state to prove whether or not this machine is reliable. I have argued this uh, countless times just to be shut down time after time after time again. Uh, so this is very, very, very rare. In 1984, a court case ensured that defense attorneys like Saya couldn't argue the results of a breathalyzer test. That will no longer be the case on Friday when questions about the Intoxilizer 8000's reliability come into question in court. If Saya's right and the Intoxilizer 8000 is indeed flawed, it could lead to problems in courtrooms throughout the state. When the evidence comes out in this case with all the problems and all the flaws with the Intoxilizer 8000, I think it's going to catch on like wildfire and spread across the state with a lot of judges excluding the test results. The company that designed the machine, CMI Inc., did not return NBC4's calls for comment. However, a statement that was released by the Ohio Department of Health quotes Robert Jennings saying, The Intoxilizer 8000 was chosen for use in Ohio as a breath alcohol testing instrument because of its proven performance, reliability, and repeatability. The instrument is approved and in use in 14 other states and 16 foreign countries. SEA is ready to debate that. And we're finally turning the tables here uh, and, and, and hopefully allowing defendants to challenge evidence that's, that's put forth against them. Reporting from Columbus, James Oldham, NBC4. How would you like it if strangers had access to your personal information through your Facebook or Twitter account? It's happening. How to stay safe at 11. These days, Twitter and Facebook are as common as baseball and apple pie in America. Everyone uses them, but are your accounts safe? And we're just our own worst enemies. So. Harry Trombitis is a special agent in the FBI. He's seen Facebook and Twitter accounts get hacked firsthand. Uh, we're all human. We all make mistakes. I've had law enforcement partners. Uh, from different agencies that have been victimized. He says the most common way hackers are gaining access is through phishing scams. It starts with an email that says something is wrong with your account. Then it tells you to click on a link provided. Takes them to a website that looks just like the real Facebook or Twitter uh, site and they feel very comfortable in entering their username and password and, and really what they're doing is providing that information uh, directly to the bad guys. College students are some of the most common targets. Just ask Chris Manella, a freshman at Ohio State who's seen his friends' accounts get hacked. You know, I definitely see some people getting hacked. I personally have never been hacked myself, but uh, you know, it's, it, until they get a hold of your uh, personal information, that's really when you start to worry about it. So perhaps the best protection against a hacker is, well, yourself. You know, if there's a weird link, you know not to click on it. It's all about being smart and being safe. In the vast majority of cases, you have to allow yourself to be victimized. Reporting from Columbus, James Oldham, NBC4. We now welcome in James Oldham. He's a senior reporter for The Lantern at Ohio State University. He co-wrote the article, which is making headlines today. And James, what tipped you off to this story? 
Well, there have been uh, quite a number of investigations and reports lately uh, surrounding the Ohio State Buckeye football program. We were hoping to learn a little bit more information about the situation and what's been taking place. So we reached out to uh, a number of players hoping to get a response, hoping that they could fill us in on some of the things that we had questions about. And Ray Small was one of the gentlemen that contacted us and said to give him a call. According to Ray Small, how aware were the coaches of what was going on? Uh, you know, Ray didn't talk much about the coaches and whether or not they were aware of the situation. He did mention that in the locker room, the players didn't generally discuss uh, the types of deals they were receiving, uh, whether it be discounted tattoos or car deals. He said that when they're offered deals, it was something they might tell a close friend. But other than that, they sort of keep it hush hush and, and didn't really discuss it with any of the other players or the coaches for that matter. A lot of former players have reportedly accused Small now of lying. What's your response to that? You interviewed him, you wrote the story. Um, as far as I know, Ray was very honest and very candid in the interview. Uh, I, I don't think he had any reason to lie about the things he said. He answered all of my questions. He took responsibility for his actions and uh, was very honest and forthcoming. So, uh, you know, I, I can't speak to whether or, or not he did, but as, as far as I know, he was completely honest with me. You're on campus. How big of an impact is this having in Columbus? Uh, well, we've certainly received some messages from people on campus. It, it seems to be, uh, again, a bit of a mixed reaction. There are some that are obviously disappointed in Small's comments, but uh, there are others who uh, enjoy the article and enjoyed the read. So, uh, again, uh, a bit of a mixed reaction. It appears that uh, some are not liking the article. Some, uh, you know, some do. So it just depends on who you speak with. James Oldham, a senior at Ohio State who uh, co-wrote the article on Ray Small uh, revealing more transgressions uh, with Ohio State these in the past. James joining us here on College Football Live. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Allie. The women's basketball team is getting ready to play Iowa tonight at 8.30 p.m. in the quarterfinals of the Big Ten Tournament. The two teams split the regular season series one-to-one, -one, with Ohio State picking up their most recent win, 81-67, in Columbus. The winner of that game will be moving on to the semifinals of the Big Ten Tournament. Switching over to men's basketball now, the men will be hosting Wisconsin at Value City Arena this Sunday at 4 p.m. in their last regular season game. Seniors John Diebler, David Lighty, and Dallas Lauderdale will be participating in the senior night festivities before the game. And their only other game this season, Wisconsin won 71-67, coming off of a brilliant 27-point performance from guard Jordan Taylor. With a win, Ohio State will clinch the Big Ten title and will also have the number one seed in the Big Ten tournament next weekend in Conseco. With Lantern Sports, I'm James Oldham.